Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of the Linux Guide. Today I'm going to be talking about how to install Ubuntu Server on a computer. There's a couple of prerequisites for this video. First, you're going to need to have a bootable flash drive or DVD. If you would like me to make a video on how to make one of these, let me know in the comments, I'd be happy to do that. The next thing you're going to want to do is have your computer. You don't need a very powerful computer. This computer that I'm running is a virtual machine, but it has two CPU cores, so a dual core processor, and it has four gigabytes of RAM. This is a pretty low-end computer even from 10 years ago, so if you have an old laptop lying around, this may make a great server for you. Another thing I want to note, a server is just a computer that serves, so any old computer that you turn into a server is a server. You don't need some fancy $10,000 computer that you bought that mounts in a rack to be your server. Even a little laptop can do it. What I want you to do is go ahead and put your USB or DVD in that computer and boot from the either DVD or the USB hard disk. And when you do that, you'll hit your power button and you'll press either F2, F10, F12, or delete. And your computer may not be one of these, but it's probably one of these four keys that will bring up a menu that looks something like what you're seeing on my screen right now. It'll be a little bit different, but the point is it has options of what you can choose from. Now since I'm in a virtual machine, it doesn't properly recognize that I'm actually using a USB image. So I'm going to click C for CD-ROM even though I'm using an image. But you want to pick whatever device that you're using, whether it be a flash drive, which you'll be able to see your flash drive there. So like if you had a SanDisk flash drive, it would say SanDisk. If you had a Kingston drive, it would say Kingston. Or if you have a DVD, you just click the DVD drive. And then you'll see your computer start to boot up and it'll look something like you're seeing on your screen. Let's go ahead and wait for it to boot up and then I'll explain how to install Ubuntu Server. Alright, so now you've booted up from either your disk or your flash drive or whatever you use to boot up. Here we are in the Ubuntu Server installer. Now I'm installing Ubuntu Server 20.04 LTS. The LTS is important because it gives you five years of support from when Ubuntu was released for Ubuntu. Now there's other Linux distributions you could use. You could use Debian, you could use Arch. I'm a big fan of Ubuntu Server because I think that it's just really friendly for setting things up and getting things going quickly thanks to some of the installer features that I'll show and also snaps. So let's go ahead and move forward with an English installer and you may or may not see this screen. Basically if you're running an older image it can fix it so that you're running the newest image and I always go ahead and do that. So let's update to the new installer and continue from there. Okay, you can, so you can see it detected our English US keyboard, which is what I'm using. You can go ahead and select whatever you're wanting to use there and click Done. By the way, I'm navigating entirely with my arrow keys and hitting Enter to select what I want. So on this screen, you'll see this is where you can set up a static IP address. I'm not going to do that, but if you're going to go ahead and set up a server, you're going to want to go here to Manual and configure a subnet, an IP address, and a default gateway. So your default gateway is your router's address. Your IP address, of course, will be the address that you're assigning to this server. And then your subnet mask is going to be the default slash 24 subnet mask. Like you can see here, if you look where it says DHCP v4 10.0.2.15 slash 24, that slash 24 is the subnet mask. And that's the default. Unless you're fancy with subnetting, you will have no reason to use anything but slash 24. And also, if you're fancy with subnetting, this probably isn't the video for you anyway. But you're going to want to go ahead and set a static if you're going to use this on your home network or on the internet so that your server is always in the same place. If you'd like me to do another video on static IP addresses, let me know in the comments. That's another video that I'd be happy to, to walk through. So let's go ahead and click Done. You can set a proxy address if you want to. I never do, and I'm going to click Done. You can do a mirror address. I use the default here as well, so Done. Just use Ubuntu's. And finally, we have some partitioning stuff. I strongly recommend using an entire disk when you're installing a server, so if you need to have multiple servers on one computer, you should set up some kind of hypervisor, like Proxmox, and then that way you can make virtual machines and use the entire disk for all of your server stuff. This tends to work better. I'm going to go ahead and move down here and hit enter for done, keeping all of these settings the same. It asks one more time just to make sure these are the changes I want. They are. It installs Grub, which is our bootloader and it installs an ext4 partition which is our actual operating system so we'll hit done 
Are you sure you want to continue? See, Ubuntu is actually really good about making sure that you know what you're doing when you're about to format. Yeah, we'll continue. Now, the installer process is actually going on in the background, which is nice, but it lets me set up a username and everything right here while it's installing. So I'm going to call this server Ubuntu server stage. You'll notice here that I have a your name and I have a username. I would advise you whenever using Linux to make these the same thing so that you don't get lost. Finally, once you have everything in here the way you want, go ahead and hit done. And it's going to ask us more stuff that we want to install. Do I want to install SSH? This is a server, so yeah. You have the ability to actually get an identity from GitHub or Launchpad too, which is pretty awesome. I don't need to do that for this server, but all this stuff is why I think Ubuntu Server is just so excellent for setting up a home server because it asks you. It makes it easy for you. It installs it for you. Let's hit done. All this stuff can be installed right here while I'm installing the server. So if I wanted to install Nextcloud, I can scroll through here and I can select Nextcloud by hitting the space bar and I can install Nextcloud. I can install Docker. I can install Livepatch. I can install PowerShell, Wormhole, Google Cloud. Now, I'm not going to install any of this stuff. It comes with all of this stuff prepackaged, so you don't have to try to figure it out. It's all right here. So if you wanted an xCloud server, you can just tell it, install an xCloud server, and it'll do it for you right here in the server installation. You don't have to then go configure it later. It's just already done. So let's get done. And now we're just going to wait for the installation to finish. Okay, so now that we've got the server installed, we're going to go ahead and reboot. So let's do that. And once you reboot, you're going to see this login screen. I had numlock on, so it says the numlock's on. But this is where you will type in your username and your password. And now you are on your server. Congratulations, you've just installed Ubuntu Server 20.04. Here you can see I can make a file and do anything like I can from a regular command line. Except since I have SSH, I can now access the server elsewhere on my network. As always, thank you for watching The Linux Guy. Please follow and subscribe to us on Library and BitChute, and we'll see you in the next one.